Hey everyone, welcome back to another medical terminology practice problems lesson. So here is another set of practice problems for us to exercise and utilize our medical terminology. So the first word we're gonna look at is hemianopsia. So if we break that word down, the prefix hemi means half or part of. An, an means lack of, and you might see this as just a, but here it's an, so an means lack of. Ops, so that part of this word ops means eyes. So it's related to sight, you can think of optics. And the suffix ia, the suffix ia means abnormal condition. So if we actually put all of this together, really what this means is that it is an abnormal condition involving lack of part or lack of half of eyesight or of sight. So we can see this in conditions like bitemporal hemianopsia, so where there's field cuts. So this is what this term means. The next medical terminology problem is stomatitis. So what does this word mean? So if we break it down again into its component parts, the prefix stomat or stomato means mouth or pertaining to the mouth. And the suffix itis Itis means inflammation. So when we put this together, it's simply inflammation of the mouth. So stomatitis means inflammation of the mouth. The next medical terminology problem is fasciopelagic or fasciopelagic. So fasciopelagic, if we break it down, the prefix fascio means face. Plage means paralysis. And the suffix ic means pertaining to. So Facioplegic means pertaining to paralysis of the face, or it's a condition of face paralysis. So that's what facioplegic means. The next word is dextrocardia. So again, we break it down from prefix to suffix. So the prefix dextro, dextro actually means right, or the right side, or the right direction. And card means heart, or pertaining to the heart. And we learn that ia, the suffix ia, means abnormal condition. So dextrocardia is really an abnormal condition involving a right-sided heart. So it's really where the heart has been flipped. It's on the other side. So instead of it being predominantly on the left side of the chest wall, it's actually on the right side. So this is what dextrocardia is. The next word is pyomyoma. So if we break that word down, the prefix pyo means pus, my, refers to a muscle, and the suffix oma means tumor. So if we put all this together, it might not really make sense, pus, muscle, tumor, but really it's pus within a muscle tumor, and it's actually a pyogenous infection of a lyomyoma, so it's actually a very rare condition. The next word is eosinophil. So again, we break that word down, eosino. Eosino means red or pertaining to the color red, and the suffix phil, phil actually means, or you can think of it as file or philia. Phil means love of, and you can think of it as lover. And when you really put this together, it means lover of red or lover of the color red. But it's actually a type of immune cell that stains red and actually stains well with an eosin stain. And this is a bit of a weird way of naming a cell, but other cells are named like this too. And again, it really means lover of a red stain. It's actually immune cell that stains red. The next word is a calculus. So again, we break this down again. A, so the prefix a, we talked about the prefix before an, but this time it's a, and a again means lack of or lacking. Calcul, calcul means stone, and the suffix s means condition or process. So a calculus means that it's a condition that does not involve the presence of a stone. And some conditions often are caused by a type of stone, like a gallstone. So in cholecystitis, we see gallstones being a very common cause. But, but when there's no stone present, we call it a calculus cholecystitis. So there's no stone causing an inflammation of the gallbladder. The next word is staphylococcemia. 
So we break that word down again, staphylo. Staphylo means cluster, and oftentimes it's a cluster of grapes. And this might sound weird, but we'll keep going. Cox refers to cocci, or really what it means is round in shape or appearance. So we look at the suffix next. The suffix means an abnormal blood condition. So when we look at cocci, cocci are a type of round-shaped bacteria. Staphylococci are a type of round-shaped bacteria present in clusters. And we can refer to it as a cluster of grapes. So it's really the presence or infection of staphylococci bacteria in the blood. But when we break it all down, this is actually what it means. So it's funny to look at the specific details of each part of this word. The next word we're going to look at is pseudohyponatremia. So the prefix pseudo, pseudo really means fake or false or something appearing to be real or ostensibly is real, but it's not. Hypo, hypo means blow or less or low. And nadir means sodium. And the suffix emia, again, means an abnormal condition of the blood or an abnormal blood condition. So when we put this all together, pseudohyponatremia means that there's an abnormal blood condition involving a false measurement of low sodium. So this is actually a condition where when you look at a sodium level, it looks low, but it really isn't low. It's actually a laboratory artifact. There's something else that is essentially disrupting the measurement and making it look like the sodium level is low. The next word is capnography. So we break that word down, capno. Capno means carbon dioxide. So you might have heard of hypercapnia. And the suffix graphy, graphy means recording. So capnography is a recording or monitoring of carbon dioxide levels or concentrations in respiratory gases. The next word is proctotresia. So again, we break this word down. Procto, procto refers to the rectum or anus or both oftentimes. Tresia. Tresia is actually a perforation or an opening, and we can think of it as a surgical opening as well. So proctotresia, when we put this all together, is actually perforation or opening of the rectum slash anus, and it's usually a surgical procedure for an imperforate anus in babies. So proctotresia is actually a surgical procedure to make a perforation or opening of an imperforate anus. The next word is somnambulance. Somnambulance, if we break this word down, som. Som refers to sleep or pertaining to sleep. You can think of somnolence, where you're very tired, very sleepy. And ambule or ambulance. Ambulance really refers to walking. So somnambulance is a condition of sleepwalking. So that's what that means when we put it all together. The next word is adenasthenia. So adenasthenia, if we break it down, adene. You can think of adeno or adenoid, those types of words. It's actually a gland or pertaining to a gland. And asthenia, you might have heard of words like myasthenia gravis. So asthenia, the suffix means weakness. So when we put this all together, it might sound a bit weird, a weakness of a gland. But really, it means that there's a reduced activity of the gland. So it does make sense when we actually put it all together. Weakness of the gland, but it's really reduced activity or functionality of a gland. The next word is chondromalacia. So chondromalacia, the prefix chondro means cartilage, and the suffix malacia means softening. So chondromalacia, when we put this all together, means a condition involving softening of the cartilage. And you might have heard of other conditions like osteomalacia, where there's a softening of the bone. So this is a condition involving softening of cartilage. The next word is osteoclast. So we break this word down. I mentioned that osteo means bone. So osteo means bone or pertaining to bone. The suffix clast, and if you've watched some of my other lessons, clast clears bone. So clast clears bone. It's actually an absorbing cell. So osteoclast is a type of cell involved in absorbing or degrading or clearing bone. So that is what osteoclast means. The next term is blenemesis. So blenemesis, we break it down, blen, blen, the prefix means mucus. And the suffix emesis, so emesis really means vomiting. So you might have heard of words like hematemesis, vomiting of blood. 
But this here means vomiting of mucus. And this is actually a more antiquated term that is not often used. The next word is ankylosis. So again, we break this word down, ankle. Ankle means stiffening or fusion. The suffix osis, osis means an abnormal condition. So ankylosis is an abnormal condition involving stiffening. That's when we put it all together, that's what it means. An abnormal condition of stiffening or fusion, and it's often of the vertebrae. And you can think of the condition ankylosing spondylitis. So ankylosing spondylitis is a condition where we actually do see an abnormal condition of a stiffening or fusion of vertebrae. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Please check out my other medical terminology practice problems for more practice and example problems. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.